Okay, and uh, sorry for the quality of the image, but I actually had to hook up my old uh, eyesight camera uh, to my MacBook. Uh, I couldn't get my DV cam to work uh, because the battery is drained and yep, I forgot where I put the put the external power <laughs> connector. So uh, this I have to do. Uh, I've just started up the Commodore 64C, as you can see here. Um, since the MMC replay cartridge is in the back, uh, it has started up the menu for the MMC replay. So I'm gonna hit the F1 button to enter the menu, and I'm gonna go to the games folder. You won't be able to see anything of that, but I will start up a game here. Uh, I have quite a few. Um, I'm gonna start up a small game known as Gyrus, just because it's quick uh, to load, and I really like this old game. And um, since it's already loaded, I will uh, quickly show you this. This is an other uh, old goalie, the Tac 2 joystick. Uh, it was the king of the joysticks for its time. Uh, this is probably a new model because I remember the one I had had a metallic handle here. This one is completely plastic. Um, Anyone out there uh, that used to play Decathlon knows why you have to have the Tech 2. Uh, let's start up the Gyrus, and this is a very old arcade like game. Most of the games for the C64 during the first uh, years, uh, for, uh, during its first years, was of either arcade style or they were platforms. And even if this is an old game, it's still really fun to play. And just uh, if you think about it, this machine still is running just in one megahertz, one megahertz, and it has 64 kilobytes of ROM. And compare that with a modern PC, I'm still impressed what what you actually can do with these old machines. But of course, you had to do all programming in. Uh, in machine code. This program is not possible to do in, in, in uh, BASIC. Okay, so I think uh, that's enough for that. Let's go further on here. Uh, so moving a bit forward here, uh, I just uh, started up my 1571 compatible disk drive. This is not uh, our original Commodore disk drive. This is the Enhanced 2000. It's a clone. And on top of the disk drive here is the 1530 dataset cassette drive. And that most people are used to, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna show you here I'm using a special load command that gonna list what's on the disk that I put in the drive, and we can uh, put a basic command here, uh, known as list, and it will show all the files, and uh, let's see, I'm gonna try to load uh, Turbo Assembler 7.4 here, and see, So, working with these old machines, loading programs from either cassette drive or disk drive, and you have to have, be, have to be patient. Uh, the program I'm loading right now is a Turbo Assembler. It's a development environment for the Commodore 64. A uh, really good one for this old machine. It's not really big, but as you can see, it takes some time to load the program. When the lights turned off there, that's when it was finished. So, let's start up the program by hitting a run and clear the memory and let's see I'm gonna try to load something here and I think I had a program by the name of black did I? let's see yeah it's loading something so I lo just loaded an assembler program into the turbo assembler and just by hitting uh, F4 key here. Nope. That was not the key. I want shift. 
uh, it will start that program and I don't think you will see anything more than a flickering screen <laughs> but this, that's the program loading uh, running so then I just can hit run stop no restore button and then I'm back into the turbo assembler uh, environment again um, so this is actually a really good good uh, development environment if you want to to enter programs the the old way I've already uploaded the early video showing you how to use a cross compiler I think that's the preferred way it's much much faster to to program that way but sometimes I have this retro feeling and I like, like to sit down and and code directly on this machine so that's about the C64C and I guess that's about what I wanted to show you of the real machine so you get a feeling for it and um, okay